Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the OK Grognard Show. It is Saturday, August 29th, 2020, 9.30 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And it's Saturday, and that means we're doing a GM review day, just a sort of a review from a GM's perspective of one or two different things. Uh, one of the main things we're looking at today is the Penguin Dictionary of Symbols, which is a hefty tome, to say the least. It's, uh, oh, it's uh, close to 1,200 pages of symbols and reference material that you can get and it is chock full of DMing, GMing inspiration if you just flip through this and pick a page and start reading about something that catches your eye I guarantee within a very short time Ideas will be springing into your head of things you'll be able to do during games. And uh, I also want to take a look at something called the RPG and War Game Supply Source Book. This is uh, something that came out first time this August. It's... Uh, being touted as akin to a the old Sears toy catalogs, and uh, I get I get the impetus. You know, it's uh, it's definitely got some of that feel to it. In that you look at something like this, and you think to yourself. Well, it's just chock full of gaming stuff, isn't it? And it's true. And it's also true that when you... You get much more excited about something like this when... It is a... Uh, full color catalog. When it's free. Which it is. Uh, it's paid for by those who are putting their stuff in here, advertising-wise, essentially. Um, and it can be all sorts of stuff. This is put out by uh, John Floyd Kelly, who is uh, famed for, what's it called, Bexham's Bazaar. And he is the tabletop engineer on YouTube. He does some... Um, pretty interesting stuff he's worth having a look at but this in particular caught my eye it just came out and it is an interesting thing for sure he says when i was a bit younger every year around november the sears christmas toy catalog would arrive in the mail i would thumb through that catalog every day for a month looking at all the colorful toys and games that were available I didn't know what I would be getting for a present, but I figured it had to be something on one of those pages. The anticipation was powerful, and my imagination ran wild with every flip of the page. Today, I get the exact same feeling when I visit the websites and Etsy pages and Patreon listings that relate to my gaming hobby. I play RPGs and war games, and I'm always on the lookout for new things to enhance my games. I bookmark all these pages as I browse the internet, confident in my ability to find them again. But over time, my bookmark collection has exploded and become a thing of pure dread. Websites have come and gone, and others have changed URLs, while many have names that aren't descriptive enough, descriptive enough to find that needle in a haystack. And that's a brief explanation for how the idea for the RPG and War Game Supply Sourcebook was hatched. I wanted a place to maintain 
all of the various gaming companies and Kickstarters and Patreons and Etsy pages and more. Searchable by an eye-catching image and divided up into categories. Oh, and some fun-to-read articles and tutorials tossed in for fun. And that's exactly what my gamers are going to get. <laughs> my gamers. And that's exactly what gamers are going to get in each 100% free issue of the source book, along with an index at the back. My hope is that over time the source book will become like that Christmas toy catalog filled with inspiration, images, and eye-catching wonders that will make a gamer smile. But just like the internet, there is simply no way for me to know about every gaming resource out there. I need your help, gamers and sellers. Spread the word. Tell those companies you buy from about my source book. Point them to GamerSupplySourceBook.com and help me to fill the source book with every imaginable resource for RPGs and war games. I'm even open to adding new categories if the demand is there. Welcome to the RPG and Wargame Supply Sourcebook, connecting gamers with sellers of products and services for all your gaming needs. Find a nice, comfortable chair and enjoy every flip of the page. And click on an image to visit the site. There you go. Good morning, Ink Dweller 8. How you doing? We're looking at this uh, new release, this August 2020 release of the Gamer Supply Sourcebook. It's a freebie. I'll put a uh, link in the show notes for it. I just read his introductory page. Here is his Blue Rocket Writing Services Incorporated is his uh, imprint, I guess. Um... Category is 164 pages. It's got miniatures. Uh, he put in a product review, one of his own. It's not a paid review. He mentions at the end of it. It is something he purchased with his own money. Kickstarters, terrain. So miniatures, Kickstarters, terrain, 3D printing, RPGs and war games, channels, miscellany, FLGSs, and last minute inserts. So he adds on some pages at the end for people that are coming in right around the deadline um, for when he puts this out. I know that he has a deadline of the 10th of each month with the intention of having it drop uh, on the 20, 25th. I forget. I'll have to double check that. I think it's on one of the pages. We'll do a quick flip through of this thing. Like I said, you can get it for free, so I'm not showing you anything you can't pick up for yourself for nothing. So let's have a quick look. Thank you, advertisers. Okay, he talks about advertising in general and to get people to put their stuff in. He has a Patreon page. I think it's at levels at four, six, and ten bucks. Advertising is very inexpensive in this. Quarter page, four bucks a month, six bucks a month for a half page, ten bucks a month for a full page ad in each of his monthly. You know, provided it's getting out there in the hands of people and they're flipping through it, depending on how many, pretty good deal. I'll tell you though, uh, when you got something for free like this, it's hard to gauge completely, but because it's electronic. Uh, and he's going through drive through RPG and through his own website. He has a uh, subscribe with your email and they'll send you an email rather than just a uh, straight download link. Because, uh, and, and you know, at first I'm like, well, why don't you just let me download it? Well, okay, I get it. You need to be able to track numbers of it to some degree so that you can confidently tell the people that are advertising in it a real or closer to real circulation number. And that's fair enough. Uh, I've worked in a number of periodicals um, in the medical field and in some other places and uh, circulation is key to periodicals and being able to quantify it 
realistically uh, is always tough and it's a very important thing and advertisers are always asking um, you know it, even if I'm not seeing a direct upswing or a spike in sales of stuff that I'm advertising is my name at least getting out there am I actually getting into the hands of people that are seeing this and uh, is that exposure over time going to mean a stronger brand more sales hard to quantify all that so the idea that uh, people are interested in some real numbers on this totally get it so through his website you sign up with an email address and he will email you uh, either email you a download link or email you the thing I don't know I went through drive through RPG which you can do uh, it's a freebie, but you got to sign in with an account so he can keep track of uh, real numbers there, and he'll know that it's not just the same person downloading it a thousand times. Um, so there's some accountability there, which helps him to realistically tell people what they need to know when I advertise. Four, six, ten bucks, right? Quarter page, half page, you know, over free to over a hundred thousand RPG and war game players interesting number um his bexham bazaar and how much he knows about how many people he's able to reach through drive through rpg uh gives some sense that that number is at least not just pulled out of his ass so he can have an idea how many people he's reaching through at least drive through RPG and probably through his own sources and some combination of those. His Patreon is uh, for the advertisers, so he's not picking up numbers from there. Um, in any event, I don't know. 100,000 seems kind of ambitious, but even if it's, even if it's a tenth that, these advertising costs... For a monthly publication of 10% of what he's suggesting it can reach. Uh, are ridiculously good. I probably should. Uh, I should probably put an ad together for uh, the OK Grognard show. OS Zine. Yeah, if you know. When that's finished, definitely should do that too. But... Um, at least for the time being, uh, I should throw something in there for for the show. Anywho, take a look further. DFW 2016. DFW. I can't think of the who that is off the top of my head. There should be a line in here somewhere toward the front on that credits page that uh, says who the artists are. So maybe that's an oversight on his part. Or maybe it's elsewhere and I just haven't seen it. Brass Grave, wonderful. Bestiarum, look at all these. Mithril, never miss an issue. Click there to subscribe. High res and low res copies. Well, that's another thing you get if... Uh, if you go through drive drive through RPG, you get this high res... Um, this high res uh, PDF. And that's great. If you're looking for something you can print out, though... I think you have to subscribe with him, and it looks like you get both the high-res and a low-res one. I personally don't know why you'd want to print out even a black-and-white version of this. It's really just ideal as a... As a... Uh, click here to subscribe. It's really ideal as a PDF, and it's uh, got hyperlinks in it, too, and that's really what you want. Armies of Okay, so this thing's all hyperlinked. LGG, Lone Gunman Games. There you go, hadn't heard of them. So there's some cool miniatures there. I see a nice mana core and a griffin. Owlbear in the upper right, kind of old schooly, a little thinner than the owlbears I'm used to seeing, which is nice. It's not the, um, it's not the big, uh, the big ass version of the one you see in the. Monster manual, nor is it the uh, fancy on steroids one that they come out with uh, from WizKids, which is great too. 
just kind of an old school looking thing and I like the bases look at that whole uh, ophidian is that what we call them snake people creatures at the top we got some knolls it looks like in the middle beautiful what's at the bottom bottom left fantasy lords of fantasy there you go beautiful stuff there modern heroes legends of fantasy very nice paper golem okay there you go paper miniatures too more miniatures there all right we don't want to take the whole show up doing this and we're halfway through so let me just do some quick flipping through I know some other favorites of the show, like uh, Fat Dragon Games in here, with a couple of ads in the 3D printing and in the miniatures. And, oh, Brigade Models, beautiful, epic adventures. We got, uh, you should just pick it up. Ooh, highly detailed miniatures in this board game. That's very nice. Mm -mm -mm. Papercraft Dungeons. Okay, Ultimate Bestiary, a product review. Note at the bottom, not a paid review. Okay, that's cool. Kickstarters. Again, the artwork. Uh, we need something detailing the artist. Uh, 3D printed models there. Kickstarters, you know what? These are going to be a little less than useful over time, right? We're going to see... Uh, I guess the page is always there, and you can always go to the page and then find out if it could be purchased somewhere else or see if the Kickstarter even funded. I think most do these days. To be honest, people don't uh, take a chance on uh, putting together a Kickstarter unless uh, they're pretty pretty damn sure it's going to happen. Isolation Protocol, not bad. BG Tabletop Adventures, Land of Theria. Yeah, we're only a quarter of the pages through this, so we want to move on pretty quickly. Let's just pile along. There's a lot of open spots in here where they show about the size of the advertisements and how much they'll cost and please contact us that's okay it's 164 pages so i say there's a lot of them they stand out there's not that many of them really wwbuildings.net terrain give me the artwork dfw god why is that totally drawing a blank on uh who that is if somebody knows dfw crooked staff hey how you doing catching it live for a change very nice well thanks for coming in crooked staff terrain not took crooked staff publishing huh or yeah all right man uh this is the source book for the tabletop engineer yep that's correct it is very nice do you anybody in the uh chat happen to know dfw as a uh if you notice down by the spearhead, 2016, DFW is the initials of the artist. I'm trying for the life of me. God, I should know that. I know I know it. There you go, Crooked Staff right there. Calling it Crooked Staff Terrain. There you go. I always thought you went by Crooked Staff Publishing. Because CSP, right? I guess that's how I got that in my head so strongly. But yeah, you're mainly terrain, so why not make it more specific and make it more clear what it is you do? That's always nice. Dot co dot uk crooked staff dot co dot uk. That's how we pronounce that, right? Uk. What am I, an ugly American? Yes, yes, you are, Mark. Play more p work. War games. That's nifty. Uh, da, da, da. I want to advertise. There's what the full page looks like. Panhandle, old barrow scenery. We're going to flip ahead a little bit. Oh, I like that castle, though, on the lower left. That's pretty cool. Um, nice terrain. Always nice with the 3D terrain. But I'll tell you what. At certain tables, especially with older gamers, those of us who are larger who don't like getting up and down once we've seated ourselves at a game table. Certain terrains that have a higher than miniature height uh, that are 3D can be uh, tricky to use. They're great at uh, conventions, for instance. I really like the visuals and stuff, and if you're at a Wargaming type table or a larger table where everyone's standing around rather than seated. 
that works fantastic. But this 2.5D stuff that uh, Chris at Cricket Staff uh, does the textures for, very cool. That's not to say that 3D stuff isn't neat. I love it. I've got some really cool uh, cavern pieces I'm painting up from Fat Dragon. Some of his Dragon Lock stuff. Just so amazing how many uh, how many pieces he's come out with over the time to- over time. Um, what do we got here? Scenery says a warworldgaming.com. Okay. Two minute tabletop. I hadn't seen that before. Is that supposed to be like a like a ramen noodle container? Oh, two minute. Okay, that that would make sense, right? All right. Uh, Christus Gnomish, cheap, dirt cheap dungeons. Jim Kelly, tabletop engineer. There you go. And he's doing a tutorial on several pages in here for doing some dungeon tiles. That's pretty cool. There's a Minotaur there, DFW at the bottom, um, by his uh, loincloth, tunic, whatever you want to call it. Oh, nice stuff. Panhandle again. So he's got a couple ads in here. There's their Demo Gorgon, Patreon, Arch Villain Games. All right. Good looking stuff. Damocles, Raygun Raptors, War Lair. Maddox, Neptune, Shipworks, those are neat. Those are neat. Very specific, though. Patreon, Gloomy Kid Minis, White Werewolf Tavern, Wu Fu Workshop. Those are neat buildings, huh? Where are we at? Oh, man, that's some crazy ass miniatures there, huh? A lot of detail. Beautiful stuff. Heroes Infinite, okay. New release null pack from Manual Boria, I believe that says, uh, coming soon on my mini factory. Very neat. Hobgoblin 3D, Vanquish, Dragon Scales. Now, is that Dragon Scales as related to Dragon Scales Jim Ward's? I don't, campaign? I don't think so. That's a different thing. This is uh, laser cut. 3D put together MDF stuff, right? Dragon hyphen scales.com. Um, um, shell, beautiful, lovely stuff. Mm-mm, puzzle lock. They've got a few different ads and a full page. Nice. Bard Forge. Dragon Trapper's Lodge. Mm 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 mm. Town Smith, Ooh, man, all sorts of beautiful miniatures. Definitely go grab a copy of this. There's our buddy, Fat Dragon Games, Tom Tullis. Looking a little thin in the picture. No, it's a skeleton. I'm just kidding. Anywho, another uh, DFW here. Frostgrave again. Call of Cthulhu. DCC. There's DM Scotty. He's the coolest. LD Send Publishing. I'm sure that's not quite right. This is not a test. Okay. Lex Arcana. There you go. From RA's Games. Uh, and these are all RPGs and war games, right? Monkey Games. Twisted. Super High School. VentureAWeek.com, still around. Doing a Kickstarter, but also as an RPGer. Here we go, Wars of Oz, Old Glory. Good minis, traditional 25s there. Lots of army stuff there. Beautiful stuff here, more DCC, Roll and Play, Inkwell Ideas. Man, always a lot going on there. Lore Wars. I hadn't heard of this one before. That's some nice artwork on there. Some D12s hanging out in front of a hut for the DiceHut.com. Very nice. Brand Army Men from Wargame Vault. That's where you go to get the cool stuff. World War Tesla. <laughs> Tommy Dulles again. 
from Fat Dragon Games. That's a really evocative image, too. Isn't that a beaut? And there we go. Bite RPG. We got Chronicle Cards. Wild Shaped Decks. Spectrum Games down at the bottom. Table Salt Gaming. That ad needs to be cut a little better. I think that's getting cut off on both sides. Slightly different uh, sizing on that. But Battle Space is, looks like some cool stuff terrain-wise there. Uh, let's see. Squadron Strike, Birds of Prey, Traveler. Oh, that's all. Ad Astra Games. There you go. Beautiful stuff here. Some more. Oh, that's pretty neat. It's a space combat with depth. Kind of a quick uh, quick system. Ad Astra. Part of the Ad Astra stuff, I believe. All that together. Troll Lord Games. There you go. Some of the best stuff there. Castle and Crusade, of course. Burrows and Badgers. Oh, Sworn. All right. Channels. Another DFW 2016. It must have been all part of one art pack from somebody. But I need to know who. DM's Craft, DM Scotty, there you go. Wylock. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and this is that sort of thing. Ah, yeah, I'm CSP Chris in most places, but called the channel Crooked Staff Terrain to make it more obvious what I was doing and also to confuse matters, it seems. No, not at all. It's just I've known you since EN World days and always knew you as, as Chris and then C CSP Chris and then... Uh, yeah, but for anybody new coming to you, having terrain in the title of the of the uh, name, it's definitely a plus. It's definitely a smart move there. Black Magic Craft. Man, this guy's got so many cool builds and stuff on his channel on YouTube. Well worth it. So these are channels, right? I think because he's a YouTuber, he calls them channels. And mainly puts them there, but I imagine you could put podcast advertisings or Twitch stream advertisings in here, like what I do. But these are all YouTube, mostly crafters, because Tabletop Engineer does mostly crafting stuff on his own. And I think that's why he's gone with YouTube. Tabletop Witchcraft, there you go. Dungeon Craft, YouTube symbol in the bottom. And you know what? OK Grognard Show shows up on YouTube as well and uh, wherever people get it. Miscellany, again, DFW, right? Yep, down by the Karachi UG, there you go. Oh, love hot wire foam factory tools. Very useful. PlaidFX.com. Indie Invasion. I'm not familiar with this. Well, that's a podcast. There you go. Facebook Indie Invasion. Okay. Army Painter. Fantastic. Oh, there's one of those uh, beefy owlbears I was talking about earlier. Atlantic Dental Supply. Well, there you go. So they both do 3D filament as well as the uh, Merlin's Magic Plaster, which is uh, some of the best stuff if you're doing mold work. 60 resin, easy flow 60 resin. There you go, that too. This is that other project that he works on all the time. Um, this Mr. Kelly. Six bucks an issue on Drive Through RPG. Click here, subscribe, and get it for four bucks an issue. RPG and Wargaming Magazine. There you go. And let's see. Costa Lacan. All right, here's a convention. They also, do, oh, that's from the Indie Invasion podcast people. Or vice versa. They sponsor that. Okay, that's all right. Same type. I'm assuming it's the same bunch. Mace. Oh, that's coming up in uh, November. Hopefully they'll be able to make that work. So many uh, physical conventions getting canceled. Prezcon. Next February, so we're already advertising into 2021. RPG Candles. The RPG Haversack. That's really neat, right? This nice uh, nice bag with all these nifty pockets in it. Historicon 2021 coming up. FLGS. He says 
If you want a quarter page ad for free, just to try it out, if you have a game store, if you're reopening, might be a good time to throw one in. Now, granted, it's a little bit tricky unless you have an online component to your game store. You probably won't see as much of an effect um, because obviously this is being distributed worldwide and there's so many people that are never going to be within a stone's throw of your your physical location. So um, bear that in mind. Nevertheless, he said, uh, I think it's throw in a quarter page ad for free for your first timers for your brick and mortar stores. Very nice of him to do that. Uh, Level Up Gaming, there you go in Florida, Houston. We've got uh, right down in Grays Lake, Illinois, the Gift of Games, Tim, who runs a store down there. Wonderful fellow. Pick this up. It used to be Unique Gift in Games in that space. Then they went down for the count. I think it was vacant for four to six months or so. So a lot of gamers drifted off to other places, but he's been rebuilding um, the clientele, the customer uh, base. And it's a very nice clean shop. If you're down in the Grays Lake area, by all means, stopped into the Gift of Games. They're definitely a uh, uh, place I've stopped in. Michael Shorten ran a War of Cha- um, Chaos Wars uh, adventure there, uh, demo there. Last minute inserts, there you go. Armorcast, boom, Jim Martin, hello gamers, a nice little discussion of what this is all about. And then September, again, September 10th is the deadline for advertising. Um, placing advertising is September 10th, so the 20, at some point after that, it comes out, I would guess, it just came out, not too long ago so sometime after the 20th probably each month advertising after this will be held and placed in the october 15 issue maybe this came out august 15th maybe september 15th is when the next one will come out and that's why the 10th is the deadline not exactly sure you can get more details following up with him or going to his patreon i think that's about that right so we've seen all of that We think it's pretty cool. We've spent more than the entire half hour on it. So there you go. I'm going to get off of that for a second. Let's jump over to this. We'll spend spend some time on this. This I purchased um, not too long back. I've seen it used as a GMing resource by a number of people. Yoda Stein, how you doing, buddy? Ink Dweller 8, good to see ya. Thanks for stopping out today. Hey, Cricket Staff, if you're not a follower, make sure to follow the channel. And everybody who follows the channel, of course, we add into our list of people who are followers and who also have spoken up in the chat stream. Because once a week, on Mondays, we take a look at the list from the previous week, Sunday through Saturday, and we figure out who has stopped in, and of those people, we take one person. All you have to do is be a follower and chime in on the strat, on the chat stream. Um, no purchase necessarily necessary. We only ask you to chime in because we want to make sure... We're not chasing a bot because that's always the danger with online initiatives like this is that you'll think someone's a real person and you'll go, hey, you won something. You're just giving something away. It's free, but it's yours. And then you spend a couple of days chasing them down. You find out, wait, they're just a bot. Anyway, Dictionary of American Symbols, of rather symbols, not American. This is from all over the world, where are we at? We're up here. 
course we've got the green screen going so that's not going to be a beauty but we did that too we put the image up for just that reason now these glasses are good for something but they're not good for reading very small print so I'm going to pull these off for a second I'm going to put on these better cheaters what a handsome fella and I'm going to take a look inside the Penguin Reference Dictionary of Symbols. And I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to open up to the first page because I was actually looking at this earlier and thinking about it. Abracadabra. Ablution is sea washing. That's uh, like a, ablution is um, a word that references washing up often before uh, like a religious ritual or something like that. Abracadabra is actually the second listing. This charm was used throughout the Middle Ages. One only had to write it down in the triangular pattern shown below and wear it round one's next, one's neck as a sort of phylactery or charm to be protected from various diseases and to be cured of fever. And then in... Uh, parentheses p-l-a-d and i'll get into what that means later but let me just show you let's see that there we go abracadabra 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 see how it oop, oop, oop. go up go up there we go see how it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and you get down to an a at the bottom and that triangle symbol see the p-l-a-d in the back in the reference that'll tell you what the source was and there's literally a dozen plus pages, about a dozen pages of these reference P-L-A-D. I don't know what's not in here. Did I spell it wrong? P-L-A-D. Hmm. Well, that is weird for the bibliography to fail me on the first attempt. Not sure why that is. Perhaps. Mm, can't tell you. M A R A. Let's check that one from further down in the in the reference because I've used this a dozen times and then jumped on WorldCat to find out where an article was and if it was something I could pick up locally. And when I say locally, I mean. Chicago, Milwaukee, Madison, all points within an hour's drive, more or less. Marquez Review, okay. So a lot of these are going to be uh, the Mamanogion. A lot of these are going to be European references because a lot of the, or worldwide, international references. I see a lot of French references in here. A lot of British there you go. Athens, so there's a lot of Greek, or some Greek. Anyway, it's international, so stands to reason a lot of the articles they're going to be referencing are going to be. The word derives from the Hebrew A-B-R-E-G A-D sorry, space A-D space H-A-B-R-A with the first A having the long vowel sound. Hebra. Let's see. Can we get it in there? Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be visible. Yep, there it is. All right. Strike dead with thy lightning is what that phrase means. In Hebrew, it comprises nine letters, placing alpha on the left side of the triangle. Or aleph, my bad. And its ninefold repetition is the magical element. Mara being the reference, page 48 of that reference material. By arranging the letters in a reverse triangle, the celestial energies, which the charm claims to entrap, are directed downwards. Accordingly, the figure should be seen three-dimensionally as a funnel. The magic letters slanting down from the wide mouth 
to the narrow spout comprise the letters of force of a mighty whirlwind. Woe betide the powers of evil, which it strikes, since they will vanish forever from the world above into the abyss from which there is no return. Well, there you go. So there's a bit more to this, and all of these references in 1,200 pages of this book are going to have very detailed information as far as, here's an entry on saliva. Saliva is both a creation and a destruction symbol. <laughs> okay, saliva may be seen as a liquid bodily secretion possessing magic or supernatural powers with twin effects bringing together or sundering, healing or inflicting disease, soothing or insulting. There you go. Salmon, salt, and, you know, righteous persons, rings, statues. We've got something for everybody. Narcissus, of course. Mithras, mole, Moloch. Mm -hmm. Money, see coins. Lantern. Excuse me. Lantern. Simply filled a decorative function in Japanese temples and shrines. They were symbols of enlightenment and spiritual light. From the Muromachi period, 1333 to 1573 onward, when the art of gardening and the tea ceremony evolved, lanterns had a dominant role in aesthetics and became an indispensable part of the Japanese garden. Merchants offered up lanterns in Buddhist temples to bring success to their ventures, and soldiers to crown their arms with victory. Western tradition observed the use of funeral lanterns which burned either beside the corpse or in front of the dead person's house. They symbolized the immortality of the soul in contrast with the corruptible body. Larch. Like all conifers, the larch is a symbol of immortality. Hence, Siberian tribe folks cast it as the world tree down which the sun and moon had descended in the shape of gold and silver birds when associated with the moon alone as is the case of the cypress in europe the larch sometimes also partook partook of a funerary character man i'll tell you just about anything you can imagine We'll have a listing in here. But the point being, this book just becomes this idea, idea generator, right? So you can pop this book open and just flip to a random page or generate a number between 1 and 1,200 and flip to that page, right? And uh, find yourself reading about something obscure or something mundane that then has deeper meaning and is uh, going to give you all sorts of ideas for um, creating uh, scenarios in your games and it's just beautiful that way well look we're moving in on 45 minutes so let's shut her down real quick here I want to thank everybody for following the channel. If you're here and if you're chiming in on the stream chat, we will get you in on the giveaway. Virtual Game Hulk Con. Keep working on those uh, submissions for gaming events for Virtual Game Hulk Con. Mm, starting tomorrow, Rules Retrospective. We're moving on to a new character class. Haven't decided if it's going to be the Thief or the Magic user yet, but first edition 
Rules Retrospective. Weekly news and announcements on Monday, Cartography and World Building on Tuesday, Campaign Discussion Wednesday, GMing Tips Thursday, Building Adventures on Friday, and then back around the horn to GM Reviews on Saturday. Thanks again if you're following the channel, and thanks for chiming in. I do appreciate it. Also, if you're on YouTube, thank you. Please do subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the videos. Also, constructive criticism can be added in to the comments. We always appreciate that. Once again, thank you to everybody for following the show. And you have a great day. Come on back. Join us again, 9.30 a.m. each and every day. Bye-bye from beautiful Lake Geneva.